Hey guys, over the next few tutorials, we're going to be taking a look at something I've said I would do for quite some time now, and that's taking a look at digital painting. For this first one, I thought we would start with brushes and settings that will be helpful to you when you actually get ready to paint. Just a disclaimer for this is that I will be using a Wacom tablet, and you don't have to have a tablet, but it does make things easier for you. You can still create great works of art with just a mouse. It's just going to take you a little bit of patience. First thing I want to cover is the hotkeys. And knowing them will just make your time a whole lot easier. And you won't have to come, keep coming over here and clicking on tools. So I'm going to bring these up. So you have your B for brush, E for eraser. And then F5 will bring up your brush panel. These two here, Control-Z, will step back and then forward again. So that will just kind of let you flip between what you have done and the previous thing you did. Control alt z will step back until you run out of history. And your history states are up here. So you can see all these that I have here. So I could just keep stepping back and all this would go away. One little extra thing is numbers on your keyboard will control either your opacity or your flow. So if I press say 4 you see now the opacity is set to 40. And if I press here, it comes back up to 100. And I believe either if you have the airbrush set or transfer set in your brush settings, then it's going to use your flow. Basically, flow means that the longer you have the brush set in a particular area, the darker it's going to get or more opaque. Whereas opacity will have a max amount of well, opacity for particular settings, so if I set it to 30, no matter how long I press or hold it down, it's not going to get any darker than this. I've gone ahead and brought up my Wacom tablet properties, and just something else to note is your tip feel for when you're painting. You want to have it set to a setting that you're going to feel comfortable with. So the firmer it is, the more pressure it's going to take from you to reach max pressure. The softer it is, the less it takes. So just finding a, a place that you feel comfortable with will help you out quite a bit. You know, you don't want to have to be straining to get to full every time. So one of the questions I get asked quite a lot is what brushes are you using and their settings? And there really isn't any big secret to it. The two brushes I use mostly are basically standard Photoshop brushes just with various settings applied to them. It, it really all comes down to knowing the tool and how to use it, which comes with a lot of practice. You know, you're not going to get good at painting overnight. You have to spend a long time at it. I'm going to bring up my brush panel, and I'm going to come over here to brush presets, and I've already reset them. So these are basically the standard brushes that come in Photoshop CS6. The two brushes I use most often are right here, this, this hard round and this chalky brush right here with a few settings applied to them. I'm going to close my panel, F5, hide these. So I'm painting a line here and you notice it's not really a smooth line. If I zoom in again, you notice the edges are really bumpy. And what basically controls that is the spacing. How the brushes basically work, as you put down paint at first and then you drag the brush, it applies new paint based on the spacing. So you, you can see as I go really slow here, it's about an even amount between each new application. I'm going to come into my brush settings here and under brush tip shape, I'm going to come down to spacing and set it to about 5%. And just something to note, is if you are on an older computer, this is going to take more processing power. So if, if your computer is really slow, find a setting that works for you. And I'll paint a new line here, and you can see it's just a whole lot smoother. I don't have this little bumpy edge to my line. But I don't, I don't want this completely solid line. There's, I, I can't control the opacity to this at all. So I'm going to bring up my settings again. I'm going to click on transfer. 
And I believe this is called something else in older versions of Photoshop. I think it's called Other Dynamics. And then you want to come up here to Opacity Jitter. And you want to make sure that's 0%. And then this drop down here is basically different settings that you can use to control your pressure. So off just sets it to that solid line. But I want to control it from my pen, so I'm going to click on Pen Pressure. And you can see in the preview window, the edges now fade out. And I'm going to close that. And now I can control the opacity to my line. So the harder I press, the darker it gets. And I'm going to save this brush now so I can use it again later. I'm going to come over to Brush Presets and click on this new icon down here. And you can name it whatever you want. And now whenever I click on this brush, it'll automatically have those settings for me. But now I want another brush that is going to also control the size of this. So no matter how hard I press, it's always going to be the size of my brush. Come over to settings, and this time I want shape dynamics. And you can see there's a bunch of jitters on, and it's really uneven, so I'm going to turn those off. And in the preview window, there is now this nice line here that fades out and shrinks on the edges. And you can see the lighter I press, the smaller it gets, and it increases in size and opacity as I press harder. I'm going to save this brush as well. Come over here. And I'm going to go ahead and clear this. Just make a new layer. I'm going to come up to brush tip shape again. And this circle thing here basically controls the roundness of the brush as well as the direction it points. It doesn't do much on a round brush, but it is helpful for, say, a specialized brush. I'm going to flatten this out and increase the spacing. I do want this to be more random, however, so I'm going to come in and turn on scattering and just adjust this as I need it. And the scatter basically adjusts how far it kind of throws your paint, and the count is how many times it does it with each stroke. So two would be two times for every stroke, three would be three, and you can see it kind of doubles up in the window there. And so I'll just come over here, and now I have this nice ripple effect that was done in almost no time at all. One more thing I want to talk about is brush hardness. So I'm going to come up to Shape Dynamics again, and I'm going to put this up to 100%. And hardness basically controls how soft the edges of the brush are. I'm going to bring the hardness down to 40%. And this will basically just give me a brush that's rather soft but still has a little bit of hardness to it. I'm going to go ahead and open up a painting. And I'm going to show you how layer blending modes, brush settings, and color dynamics can help give you easy effects. I'm going to come over here and create a new layer. I'm going to set this to Linear Dodge, bring up my brush settings, and this time I'm going to come down to Color Dynamics. And this will let you add a little bit of variation that would be difficult to paint otherwise. You have your hue, saturation, and brightness, and you really don't need much of it. I'm going to close that, and I'm just going to sample off something here. And I'm going to give these trees some nice glowy balls. And you can see just very easily it's possible to add effects to your painting using simple brush settings. I'm going to come back to this piece, and I'm just going to delete this again. 
And now I'm going to switch to my chalk brush. So I'll come over to my brush settings, click on my brush, and there we go. It really has this nice texture that's great for landscapes, but I find that the round brush does a better job for man-made structures. I come up to tip shape, and the spacing is already set to 5%, so really all I need to do to this is add transfer to it, as well as shape dynamics. And one last thing I, I kind of do to this brush is I just tilt it up slightly, so it's more even. And that's basically the brush I use for a lot of my painting. The last thing I'm going to do is show the settings I use to paint the foliage. I get asked this quite a bit. I'm going to turn up my spacing to about 150% and come down to Shape Dynamics and turn Size Jitter all the way up and then have Angle Jitter about 63, somewhere around there as well as round this jitter up and add scattering as well as color dynamics and I'll just pick a green color here and I'll come in and paint it's probably a little too much scattering so I'm going to turn that down and turn the count up by one And you can see it just gives you that nice random edge that foliage has. And really plants have a lot of dark areas and a lot of highlights. So I'll come and I'll choose almost pure black and paint some little sections in here. And I'll sample off the green again and brighten it up. Maybe you give it a little more yellow and give some high spots on it. And it doesn't look mu like much sitting on the page here, just this white area, but when, when it is applied to an actual painting, it does look pretty good for most situations. So that'll just about do it for this tutorial. But before I go, I want to mention that I am moving, so the next couple will be a little bit slow coming out. I would also like to get an idea of anyone would be interested in me live streaming painting. I could just set up a time and people could give requests or whatever. Anyway, like and subscribe and thanks for watching.